Praise the Lord. Hallelujah today, saints. Hallelujah to the mighty God, the Holy King. Father, I praise you and worship you today. Thank you, God. Thank you for getting us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for giving us the strength to persevere through every trial, through every circumstance, Lord, that we are currently in. Thank you for teaching us more, Holy Spirit, how to take up our cross and follow you, knowing, Lord, that you are using every single thing going on in our life, Lord, to form Christ in us. Help us to surrender it all to you, to trust you, to praise you, to glorify you, Lord, in the fire, to glorify you in the flood, to glorify you knowing that we are the victors, Lord, knowing that we are in Christ who is the victor, hallelujah, and therefore we are the victor, but there are battles to fight, battles to fight today against the prince of the power of the air, the wicked vile spirits in this second heaven that come against, that try to oppress the saints. You said it would be so, Lord. Until the Ancient of Days comes. Until the Ancient of Days arises in our heart. Hallelujah. And gives us the strength to overcome. And puts that trust in us. Oh, Father, I praise you and worship you today. I thank you for your word, which is truth. Your word. That as we abide in your word and continue in your word, then we shall know the truth. And the truth shall make us free. The truth shall make us free. We need not fear man or what man can do. Lord, your word says, Who art thou that thou art afraid of a man that shall die, or the son of man that shall be made as grass? Oh God, help us to remember your word today. Help us to stand upon your promises. Hallelujah. For you do know the plans that you have for each and every one of us together. Hallelujah. As one body of Christ. Your plan is to express your son through us. Your plan is to absolutely destroy all the works of darkness. Hallelujah. And all the works of darkness that try to creep up in us, trying to take the, the lead, all these works of darkness in our flesh that try to take the lead all the time, you are putting those down daily. You are teaching us how to surrender. You are teaching us how to deny the flesh, take up our cross, and follow you. Hallelujah denying all the selfhood, every part of it. Oh God, we praise and bless your holy name for your goodness and for your work that you are doing in all of your children today. Lord, Father God, we pray today that we will absolutely know for certainty and see with our heart, with our spiritual eyes, the fact that you have destroyed the works of darkness. You have abolished death. Hallelujah. And that we can and do and will walk in the newness of life today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the Babylon's removal. You know, Babylon comes from the word Babel. They built a tower of Babel. And God confused their language. That's why it's called Babel. Babel means confusion. This whole world is a mess of confusion. Okay? When Jesus came down here, he came into a world that was so filled with confusion, religious confusion, economic confusion, and political confusion. Now, man controls these things somewhat, but it's still confusion. Absolute confusion. Absolutely built upon a lie, okay? That man, the lie is that man can be God. That man can be equal with God. That is a lie. There's only one man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost in the womb of Mary. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost. He didn't have an earthly father. Hallelujah. He is God, very God in the flesh. Hallelujah. And as he walked this earth, here's the beautiful thing about it all. He walked as a man he walked with the emotions of a human being a man the emotions of a man he had a soul he had reason 
like we have. And he had a will. Hallelujah. He had the, the power to decide. And the beauty of it all is that his reason and his emotion and his will were totally, completely, 100% surrendered to the Father. But he was tempted all the time to revert to his own reason. And one instance of that is in John chapter 7. In John 7 we read here. In John chapter 7 it says, After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. And that's what's coming up soon. Oh, hallelujah. His brethren therefore said unto him, Here's his brethren, his, his brothers, his close associates, his cousins, his brothers, coming to him, saying unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. This is a temptation from the devil coming through his brother. To do something to be seen of men. Do something so the world will know who you are. And it says in verse 5 of chapter 7, For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. See, the works of this world are evil. Jesus said so. In John 7, verse 7, it's recorded. He told them, Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these, things, these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast. Not openly, but as it were, in secret. See, Jesus waited for the prompting of the Father to go up unto the feast. He's not going to be moved by a mere man telling him what to do. Okay? And today, as his children, we are to be moved only by the promptings of the Holy Spirit of the direction of the Father given to us through the Holy Spirit in the precious blood of Jesus that's how we are to be moved that is how we are to be instructed and that is how we are to be responding to the Father when the Father says to do this or to do that to pray this way or to pray that way then the Jews sought him at the feast and said where is he and there was much murmuring among the people concerning him for some said he is a good man others said nay but he deceiveth the people howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews let me tell you today that is a fact that still happens today no man will speak openly of those who are preaching the truth for fear of the Jews, for fear of the religious society today. Okay? They, they won't mention your name. They won't talk about you because you're preaching the truth. It's a truth that not many people are willingly and openly wanting to receive today. Because people want the world and the ways of Babylon. That's what they want. That's what their desire is. Self. Improving self. Glorifying their self. And not giving all glory and honor and praise unto God. In this religious world we have today, in this Christianity that they call of God, it's not of God. It's of the world. It's of the devil. It's of Babylon. And the devil... He is using right now the tool, Christianity, he's using that tool to further his ends, to keep people trapped in their selfhood, 
to keep people trapped in their own way of doing things and calling it God, calling it Jesus. People said he deceives the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of, of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus is teaching them. See, Jesus, I've said this many times, he went up to the feast every year, his whole life from the time he was 12 years old, he went up to the feast every year and he would talk with the Pharisees. He would talk with these people in the temple. He saw what was going on. And they knew him by face, but they didn't know at that time before he was anointed in the River Jordan, they didn't know who he was. They didn't know he was the Messiah. But when he came after he was baptized in the river Jordan, he came and he spoke words of life. He, his, the words, every word that proceeded out of his mouth were words of truth, words of life from the Father. And those Pharisees, they couldn't handle it. And then after he spoke the word, and you read it in John 8, the whole discourse of John 8, right after that, he goes and heals the blind man. Blind from his mother's womb confirming that he is the light of the world and what do the what do the pharisees do they rebuked him they rebuked that blind man they threw him out bodily in other words they're throwing out jesus bodily they're throwing him out they're saying no to the revelation no to the healing no to the power of god and this is what the religious world does today in christianity if, if I went into a Baptist church, me and my wife, and preached the whole counsel of God, the truth of God's Word today, they would throw us out in the street. Same for the Catholic Church. Same for the Presbyterian. Same for the Methodist. Same for the Pentecostal Church. They would throw us out in the street because they have their little set areas of the Scripture that they hold to, and that is it. They are controlled by demonic religious spirits, which are the most wicked, evil, diabolical spirits there are in this earth today. And God says to His people, those who are really His, come out of her. Come out of those places. Because they are limiting the Holy Spirit. They are stifling, they are pushing down the Holy Spirit and trying to control the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is not going to be controlled. The Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. He is God. And He is so filled with love, and mercy, and grace, and justice. Now, at this Feast of Tabernacles, and the Feast of Tabernacles is coming up next week, at this Feast of Tabernacles, they had, a tra they had a tradition. They would pour water out in the temple. They would just flood the whole place with water as a sign of, of God, you know, the, the living waters. They would just pour, pour them out, okay? Jesus answered them in verse 16 and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Hallelujah. See, and that's what we say today. See, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. So our doctrine is not ours, but His that sent us, the Lord Jesus. It's His doctrine. It's His teaching. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit was sent to testify unto the truth, to lead us into all truth, and to glorify Jesus. Not glorify us, not glorify selfhood. That glorification process comes later, after the resurrection of the physical body. Jesus said in verse 19, Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? 
the people answered and said, Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee. They were filled with hatred. They were filled with murder. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Remember the man he healed 38 years by the pool of Bethesda? He was, he was there crippled and Jesus healed him and it was on the Sabbath day that he did it. And they were chewing him out saying he had a devil because he healed that man on the Sabbath day. They were filled with envy and jealousy against the Lord because the Lord said, Take up your mat and walk. Hallelujah. And Jesus said we would do greater works than that. But the reason these works aren't materializing in the natural is because God's people want the glory for their self. And God's not going to give His glory to anybody but His Son. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus said, Are you angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance of but judge righteous judgment. See, and, and today in the church they say, no judging. No, you can't judge. No, you're, you're, you can't judge that person. You can't judge that situation. You can't judge this. You can't judge that. Paul said in, in Corinthians that we are to judge. Jesus said, make a righteous judgment. God says in his word about 90 times he loves judgment. Okay? Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly. And they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? This is the very Messiah? Howbeit we know this man whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye know both me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And this is something God wants us to remember today. That he wants us to speak the absolute truth to people. Knowing that until the hour comes, they can't touch us. They can't do anything to us. Nothing. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. And the Pharisees... And the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Now I'm telling you right now, Jesus is in this situation. He is in a religious hellhole right there in the temple. He is in a religious hellhole. These people have turned that place into a bank, into a, a merchandising flea market. I mean, it was something that was totally contrary to the heart of the Father. Jesus went in there. God said, my, my house shall be a house of prayer unto all nations. And they had turned it into a den of thieves. And he's in there. And he's talking to them. And, and Jesus is... Is, is so matter of fact. He is so matter of fact. And that's what the devil hates that. And religious people hate it when you are so sure. Because you know as you know as you know. That God is speaking. And today I'm telling you right now. God is speaking to this wicked vile religious system. Called Christianity in this earth today. This whole system of man. That man has built up. God told me in 2000 that he was tearing down this whole religious 
conglomerate system of man. The whole thing, he's going to tear it straight down to the ground. And the only thing left will be the rock, Christ Jesus. And in order to get on that rock, you have to fall on that rock and be broken. And if you want to insist, and you want to walk, and you want to say, No, John, no, that's not true. Okay? I don't have to follow what you're saying. I'm just saying what the Word is saying. I am telling you what God is doing. There's only one foundation, and that is Jesus Christ. It's not John Calvin, and it ain't the Pope of Rome. And it's not Charles Spurgeon, and it's not the Apostle Paul. It is Jesus Christ. And we must stand upon Him, upon His truth, upon His rock. Hallelujah. He is the rock. We must walk in His way, loving Him and praising Him and doing what He says. And you can't do that if you're sitting in a pew. You can't do that. As soon as you start to move, if God starts to move you, you're sitting in a pew, come this Sunday morning. You're sitting there and the Holy Spirit comes on you and tells you to speak something in the congregation. And you're afraid to get up and speak because they might throw you out the door. And you want to tell me you're following the Lamb? No. You speak what God gives you to speak. And I have to remember that for myself. Okay? For myself. Because it's very easy to change the message of God, to suit yourself, to soothe the ears of the people when they need to hear something forceful from the Lord. Hallelujah. Something that will break that heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. It's vitally important that we listen and do what God tells us to do. I'm telling you from experience, it's vitally important. Then said Jesus said, You shall, you sh you shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. These guys, they sent this whole group of soldiers to get Jesus and arrest him and bring him in. And Jesus told them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. I mean, he's just throwing these people. They're just going, What in the world? And they're just backing up, you know. They're backing up. They can't lay hands on Jesus. He said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? that we shall not find him. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me? And where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, Now remember, they have all this water poured out here in, in this temple. He cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me, and drink. He didn't say go to the Baptist church and drink. He didn't say go to the Catholic church and drink and sprinkle yourself with holy water. He didn't say go over here and drink or go over there and drink. He said come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me into me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, This is the prophet. Oh, hallelujah. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? See, see, those, those Pharisees are afraid. They're scared of him. They sent their, their little cronies to go get him. We've had this happen to us. They send their little cronies in, try to find out what you're doing. See, they send the little cronies in because they are afraid to come and stand before you. Because you have the power of God. You have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ within you. Yeah, they were scared. See, why have you not brought him? The officers answered, never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, 
are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Oh, they thought they were they were blessed because they knew the law. They didn't keep the law. See? You have to have faith mixed with the law. The law is established by faith. Hallelujah, Paul said in Romans chapter 3. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? <laughs> I mean, the Galileans were looked upon as, as scum to these Jews down in Jerusalem at the time. Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Every man went unto his own house. Now God had me read this whole chapter 7 to set this message up. I mean, there is a Babylon in this world. People think Babylon's over in the Middle East, or they think it's down around the corner, or they think it's Rome, or whatever. They say it's America. America is Babylon. Okay, what about Russia? What about all the filth and the confusion there? What about Germany and, and Britain? And what about Italy? What about all the European countries and all of Asia and all of Africa and all of Australia? What about all of South America and Central America and Canada? What about the whole earth? The whole earth where man dwells is Babylon. It's fallen. The whole world lieth in wickedness, the Bible says. In wickedness and confusion and lies. Man is trying to still make it to heaven. They're still trying to make this bridge, building this bridge to heaven. Trying to get to that rest. Trying to get to that peace. And they can't get it because they refuse to go by the way prescribed by the Father, which is the Lord Jesus Christ and His sacrifice on the cross. And believe in the gospel. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Hallelujah! Mankind wants to go another way. They want to go another way. They don't want to go the hard way. They don't want to go the self-sacrificial way. They don't want to go the narrow way. They want to go to the broad way. They want to go the easy street way. They want to go the way where they're just all rich and full with swimming pools. And they want to go the way of love and, and rejoicing and nice and happy and everything's just good and no suffering. But it's not going to happen that way. God's going to remove Babylon. And as God is removing Babylon, there is going to be some tremendous suffering taking place in this earth. And God would say to you today, believer, those of you who are professing, you have confessed with your mouth, you believe in your heart in Jesus Christ that God has raised him from the dead. You believe he died on the cross for you. You say you're a believer. You say you're filled with the Holy Ghost. But are you willing to embrace the cross? Are you willing to embrace the narrow way? Are you willing to sacrifice your life for others? God knows our hearts today. God knows the heart of his people today. Babylon is going to be removed. In 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter is writing, to the saints in Rome. He's writing to the saints worldwide. He's writing to us. The Holy Spirit had him write this, and we have it today as a record. It says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. In other words, be mindful. He says, That ye may be mindful of the words. Be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. The scoffers there, that is a false teacher. That's what that means. False teacher. A derider. A false teacher. See, there are thousands and literally millions of false teachers that people are following out in the world today. There's very few 
Very few. Compared to the false teachers, there's very few who are speaking and preaching and counseling and giving the teaching and prophesying the whole counsel of God. Very, very few. And those that are, are not followed by the masses at all. Because the masses are deceived by the devil. They're deceived by the world. They're deceived by their very own flesh. And that's what people want. They want their own way. They want to take the scripture and make it say something that it is not saying. That it is not saying. And that's what they have done, and they have been doing it for years and years and years. See, the devil crept into the church. Paul told the Ephesians. Paul said, it's recorded in the book of Acts. He said, after I leave, grievous wolves shall come in, not sparing the flock. And that was in the first century, saints. And those grievous wolves are all throughout Christianity. They're religious demons operating through people. Okay? Through people. Now, people can repent, but here's what happens. The leadership of these congregations will not allow the truth of God's Word to be preached. Because if, if the truth of God's Word is preached, people will be fleeing out the doors, exiting the building with their money, okay? And people will get saved, and the devil doesn't want people to get saved. But God's people, I'm telling you right now, I can feel it in my heart. God is rising up in His people. And we will proclaim the truth. We will shout it from the housetops. Hallelujah. We will preach it according to the word that God gives us. Hallelujah. And speak it in the way that He gives it to us. For our God is a mighty God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. And people want to play church. And the world is fixing to crash down. I'm telling you right now, the removal of Babylon is coming. And here's what it's going to look like. They said, where's the promise of his coming? See? Oh, they say Jesus is coming back, all these false teachers. Jesus is coming back. But see, what they're doing is they're setting people up to be trapped and to be drugged down to hell by the false Jesus. Okay? By this person who... They call the, the Antichrist. Like there's only one. Okay. No. The whole world in false religion, whether it's Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Islam. It does not matter. Whatever false religion it is. Atheism. Whatever it is. It's Antichrist. It's instead of the true and living Christ Jesus. It is instead of that. And people who refuse to come out of that, especially those who know at one time in their life they had a born-again experience, they had that, that knowing that they were new creatures in Christ, but yet they went and got sucked into religion. They became an usher. Yeah. Or they became a singer in the choir. Or they did something, okay, and now they're stuck there. And as God comes upon them to speak forth His Word, they're afraid to speak it forth, like I said before. And God says, no, no, you got to come out of that. Come out of that control. See, God wants a people, and we'll have a people. If we don't respond to God, hey, he'll rise up rock, rocks out of the earth, as I said earlier this week. He'll, he'll make the stones jump up and begin to cry out the gospel. Hallelujah. We, we must be obedient to the Lord and do what he says. Look here what Peter says here. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old. These false teachers are willingly ignorant. Willingly ignorant. They are willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Ungodly men. And the word men there is not just a male. It's 444 in the Greek, which means humankind. 
okay, humanity, ungodly humanity. It, they are reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, now Peter's talking to us, beloved, those of us who are committed, those of us who are born new from heaven and filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter's speaking to us, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. In other words, what Peter is saying, and there's lots of interpretations of this verse, but what Peter is saying by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost is, it's already done with the Father. It's already done with God. Don't be ignorant of that fact, that it is already settled in the counsel of the Father what is going to happen. And our job is not to try to figure out the day and the hour that it's going to happen. Our job is to surrender and die to ourselves and take up our cross and walk with Jesus. Then we will be ready. Then we will know. Hallelujah. See, praise God. Peter says in verse 9, and I love this verse. I love every verse of the Bible. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, God is not willing that any perish, but all would come to repentance. That's the love of God. Sometimes we say, God, why are you not moving? God, why are you not doing this or doing that? See, God has a reason that sometimes we don't need to know the reason. So let's don't try to figure it out. Let's raise our hands and worship God. Let's thank our Father. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says in verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful, isn't it? That's the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is beautiful. Oh, it's terrible too. And it's a terror. It, it's got people afraid. You know what they're afraid of? They're afraid of the button. They're afraid of the, the nuclear bomb, see? This is what men are teaching. That, oh, that's nuclear weapons. Oh, God doesn't need nuclear weapons to destroy this earth? To send a fire down? There were no nuclear weapons in Sodom and Gomorrah. Go down there today to the Dead Sea where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. It's sulfur, saints. Sulfur. Fire and brimstone came down. God doesn't need nuclear bombs. That's a smokescreen from the devil. Seeing then, verse 11, that all these things shall be dissolved. Dissolved? Oh. All these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire, the heavens being on fire, wow, the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What kind of person are you to be? One that sits around and watches Monday night football, watching football on Sunday, watching sports, into fashion, doing all this. What kind of person ought you to be in all holy conversation? Sitting around talking about all the sins of the wicked this wicked world is committing. Sitting there indulging in it. Watching it on the TV. Is that how you're supposed to be? No. You're supposed to be focused on the Lord. All of us are. Focusing on God Almighty. Focusing on Him and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And loving and praising Him and walking with Him. Nevertheless, Peter says, we, according to His promise. This is what we do. One day this verse just jumped out at me. Huh? It just jumped out at me. I don't follow what Hal Lindsey says. I don't follow what, what these false teachers out there say. I don't follow the false teacher. We follow the Lord. And I follow what Peter says. with Peter. I'm with Peter. My wife, we're with Peter. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, according to God's promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hallelujah. Wherefore, beloved, 
seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be, you may be found of him in peace without spot and, and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other. Yeah. As they do also the other scriptures. See. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto their own destruction. See they, they rest these things. They ta they've taken Paul's writings and made them say a hundred different things. Do you realize that? <laughs> Paul's writings. They, they, say, they make them say so many different things that contradict each other. But it's to their own destruction that they're doing it. Because they just won't walk in faith. See, we don't have to know, quote, know everything as believers. We can walk by faith. That's why God has things written like they are in the scripture. Because he wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. And he says here, Ye therefore, beloved, Seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. See, many today in the faith, they're being led away by the error of the wicked, by the false teachers being led away, and they're falling from their own steadfastness. But Peter, and Peter says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and forever amen but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saints let me ask you a question and maybe you can give us some response on this how are you going to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by being focused on the world and the things of the world and the flesh? How are you going to grow in grace? By constantly filling your mind with trash from the world. I mean filth from the world. How? You are not. You are not going to be able to. Now in Isaiah chapter 33 in verse 14, I know many people are there. They're they're concerned. They're and rightfully they should be concerned because their hearts aren't fully set on God. And and, and I'm talking about brothers and sisters in Christ who are who are really truly born again. You're concerned about what's coming on this earth. You have little ones. You have you have grandchildren. You're concerned, and you should be concerned because your hearts are not fully. Holy set on the Lord. You get your heart holy set on God. And you give him all that concern. You cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. You lay your burdens at, on him. You enter into the rest. It says here in verse 14. Isaiah 33. The sinners in Zion. Zion here would be the church. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? It's a question. Two questions here. The Lord is asking through the prophet Isaiah. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions, of deceits, that shaketh his, shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high 
His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. When you do this, when you walk righteously and speak uprightly, you despise the gain of oppression. You, you despise deceit. See? And you, you won't take a bribe. You won't take a bribe. I had a guy one time try to bribe me. And I was like, this ain't working, you know. And he was bribing me with money, telling me to do something. And I'm like, no, this ain't working. I gave him back the money and said, here, no, I ain't going to do that. You're crazy. See? It says, Our waters will be sure. We're going to dwell on high. See, we're going to dwell on high, saints, as we, as we turn our gaze away from what's going on in the world. Okay? God will let us know what we need to know about what's happening out in this world order. We'll, we'll know by, by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. But we need to turn our gaze from that and put our gaze on Jesus. Hallelujah. See? Hallelujah. Then we're going to dwell on high. And our place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given us. Our water shall be sure. Then thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Oh, we're, we're letting Jerusalem come into our mind. That heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the Lord says, the city of our solemnities. Thine, thine eye shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habita habitation, a tabernacle, that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams. Wherein shall go no galley with oars. Neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Hallelujah. Thy tacklings are loosed. They could not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. The lame take the prey. Those that are broken on the rock take the prey. Hallelujah. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. See, we got to dwell in the Lord. We have to dwell in Him. We have to go into Him more and more. Hallelujah. Now, from chapter 3 of Second Peter, it said all these things are going to be dissolved. Okay? All these elements are going to be dissolved. This is the destruction of Babylon. Chapter 34 of Isaiah. Come near, ye nations. Come near, ye nations, says the Lord. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. And his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. This is what's happening today. This is what's going on in the world today. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. 
Edomia, saints, is Edom. Edom is Esau. Esau is the flesh. Okay? Esau was thinking about what he could get to satisfy his flesh. And he didn't care about the birthright. He didn't care about being the firstborn son of Isaac. He didn't care about his inheritance being the firstborn. See, many today, they've been born anew from heaven, filled with the Spirit of God, and they don't care that God has called them and put a call upon their life. They don't care. They're selling out to the world. Well, God says right here, His sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia. It's coming down upon the flesh of man. It's coming down upon all the fleshly ways of this world. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. With the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozra. And a great slaughter in the land of Edomia. The land of Edom. The land of Esau. Jacob have I loved, saith the Lord. Esau have I hated. And that's the flesh. And the unicorn shall come down with them. And the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood. And their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. The controversy of Zion. See, there are actually two kingdoms on this earth today. One kingdom is taken out of this earth. But it's still located here. It's in our hearts. We are the kingdom of Zion today. And there's a controversy God has with the nations of this world over Zion. The nation of Zion that dwells on this whole planet inside the people of God. And God is going to destroy Babylon. It is going to be dissolved. And the streams thereof shall be turned to pitch. Turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. And you can read that in Revelation 14. The smoke of their torment ascends up before the throne forever and ever. You must make sure today that you're right with God. You must make sure today that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Babylon is going to be destroyed. Now I'm going to give you some more scripture because I know some of you are thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's not Babylon. Look here in Isaiah. You go to go today and do a little Bible study, okay? Stop studying what fantasy football is doing and do a little Bible study today. Stop studying what your, your games, your video games are doing. Do a little Bible study today and read Isaiah chapter 13 and chapter 14. They go together, okay? Read those. Let me just read a little bit of it for you. The beginning of chapter 13. The burden of Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded, God says, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger even them that rejoice in my highness. Hallelujah. That's all of us who rejoice in his highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as 
flames. They're going to be on fire. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Talking about Babylon now. I'm going to read it all. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Joel chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, Revelations. And I will punish the world. I will punish what? The world. The burden of Babylon. The world. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Did you hear that, America? Did you hear that, Great Britain and France and all the Western European nations and Russia? Did you hear it? I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Did you hear that, nation of Israel? And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. Oh, God's doing it. Hallelujah. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. This is the word of the Lord. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. And they have no pity on the fruit of the womb, their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Chapter 14, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. See, in the midst of all this destruction, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel, not the nation that you see in the Middle East, the kingdom of Israel in our hearts. The kingdom of Israel in our hearts. Spiritual kingdom. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob oh praise the Lord praise the Lord God is so good now and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Hallelujah. See, we rule over the devil. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb, we overcome the dragon. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass in that day, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The golden city. Oh, that city of economics. Oh, that city in this world of economics and gold and silver and paper money. Oh, how it's going to cease. Hallelujah. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, the power of the wicked. Yeah, and the scepter of the rulers. Yeah, God breaks it. Hallelujah. He who smote the people 
in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The, the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee speaking about the devil here it's speaking about the devil that the whole world is following it's speaking about Satan and all of his hordes that the whole world is drowning in because they love to swim in the filth they love to swim in the flesh they love lust they love perversion they love wickedness even in the professed Christian church and God says it's Babylon. And God says he's going to destroy it today. Hallelujah. We'll read verse 11 again of chapter 14. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee. And the worms cover thee. You want some true prophecy? You go to the scripture. There it is. That's what's coming to all the false prophets. To all those prophets out there who are keeping God's little sheep's attention focused on the world. The worms are going to cover you and be underneath you if you do not repent. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, Is this the man that made the whole earth, made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of, the, of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. God says it's going to happen. I'm going to read verse 24 again. Chapter 14. This is the burden of Babylon. This is the removal of Babylon. God says the Lord of hosts had sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. Now what does that mean? The Assyrian. See? Oh, you're thinking of Syria over there. Okay, we've got to go in and destroy uh, Assad. We've got to destroy that nation. And, and uh, oh, we have to level Damascus to the ground. Okay, we just got to do it. We've got to kill all those people. It's just imperative that we do. This is what people are thinking today who call themselves by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're following the false Christ. 
This means, verse 25, that I will break the Assyrian in my land. Who is the land of God today? We are the believer. What does Assyria mean? Success, prosperity, prosperous. That's what the word Assyria means. Okay, prosperity, successful. What is the most successful nation that's ever been on the face of this earth? The most prosperous nation that's ever been is the United States of America. And I'm telling you right now, along with Great Britain and all the Western European nations and Russia and everything, they have all these plans to bring all this stuff into fruition. And I'm telling you right now, the Almighty God has plans. And His plans overrule the plans of the devil. Hallelujah. And if you're not in the camp of the Almighty God in the true way, you're in the camp of the devil. If you're not born again from heaven, then you're dead in your sins. If you're a false prophet, you are false. You are going to go to hell if you don't repent. That I will break the Assyrian. Let me read verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have purposed, so shall it stand. So shall it stand. I need a drink of water. Hold on. So shall it stand. Hallelujah. God says it's going to stand. I have purpose. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. This is what God's purpose. And upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them. And his burden depart from off their shoulders. Hallelujah. Many of you today, you are truly born again. And I'm telling you right now, God has a call upon your life. I'm telling you right now, God's going to have his way in your life. Because you are a chosen vessel. Chosen by the Lord. And he's going to break all that, that stuff of the world in your life. He's going to break it. Yeah, he's going to break it where you know, whoa, I've been wasting all these years on this and on this and on this. And you're going to say, oh, God, I repent. God's going to say, I receive you. I receive you. Come back to me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 26. This is the purpose that is purposed upon. Now get this the whole earth and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations for the Lord of hosts hath purposed and who shall disannul it and his hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back this is the purpose purposed upon the whole earth okay now I'm going to tell you something. Those of you who are who you're you're truly walking with the Lord and you're seeking the Lord, and you know, and this whole movement about the revival movement and going to have this great big outpouring and revival and everything, you know, it people want this to happen, but they want to keep all their little toys, they want to keep their padded pews, they want to keep their glass cathedrals, their stained glass, they want to keep all this stuff of the world and have revival. And God says, No. No. No, no. Revival is going to come when his people fall upon the rock and be broken. That's when revival will break out. And it's going to come when persecution breaks out. Revival takes place. When Brother Yun was in jail the first time in China, he fasted for 74 days. Did you hear me? 74 days, no food and water. 74 days fasting and the fire was spreading in the province where he was the fire was was spreading and people were being set free and, and the Holy Ghost was moving mightily as brother young was fasting and praying for the people of God because when he first went to jail he was mad at God and he, he was like he was rebuking God and God rebuked him and he repented and he began to fast and God used that fast. And I'm telling you right now, it's through the suffering. See, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And that Gethsemane means olive press. It's, it's pressing. And in that victory that he got in the garden, he was able to endure the cross. And he went to the cross and he took all the power of the devil away. He, he crushed every work of darkness. Hallelujah. We got to get this deep in our hearts and know it. Hallelujah. Our God is a mighty God. He is the victor. Babylon is going to be removed 
and Babylon is going to be removed. We believe in our lifetime, and we believe the eastern sky is going to split, and that Jesus Christ is coming, hallelujah, the true and living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not this false Christ that they're setting up the world for. I'm telling you right now, many of you, you're set up. You're set up to receive the false Christ, and you're going to be damned. You're going to be damned. Because you're looking at it with a natural eye. You're not looking in the spirit. Heavenly Father, I pray that you seal this word into the heart of every one of us, O oh God. O oh God, I pray you have mercy upon your church today, Lord. And open up the eyes to see, Lord. And crush every work of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you, keep you. Those of you who are his... He bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you. Lift up his holy countenance upon you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord be your stay today. The Lord be your strength today. His name, his authority, his character be upon you today. Those of you who do not know the Lord, come to the Lord today. Get in the camp of Jesus today. And you only do that by repenting of your sin and believing the gospel and falling on the palm of the rock and, and, and being broken and surrender. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. Become a new creation today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.